Today, we're going to be upgrading my RockShox Yari into the Lyric Ultimate. If you have a Yari or a Lyric with the Charger 2 or the Charger 1 damper, you can buy the Charger 2.1 damper kit and swap out your damper, and then your fork will essentially be a Lyric Ultimate. The Lyric Ultimate also uses SKF wiper seals and it has a new debonair spring. So if you have the older debonair spring, when you're doing this, um, it's a good idea to swap that out as well and you can put in the new wiper seals. Uh, my fork has had lower service done recently, so I'm not gonna do the seals. It already has the new seals and then has the current debonair spring as well. So today, all we're gonna be doing is swapping out the damper. If you haven't seen any of my other videos, go ahead and check out my channel page. If you like what you see there, hit that subscribe button. With that being said, swap out this damper. Okay, so to do the Charger 2.1 upgrade on either a RockShox Yari or a Lyric, you're gonna need your Charger 2.1 damper. You're gonna need dynamic seal grease. This is a rebound knob and the high speed and low speed compression for the damper. You're gonna need some crush washers, a cassette tool, a syringe for your oil. You're gonna need a shock pump, and then you're obviously gonna need your fork. We're doing this on a RockShox Yari. All right, I have my Yari in the bike stand here and I've attached my shock pump into my fork. I'm gonna be letting out all the air. Before you do this, it's a good idea to make note of what your air pressure was at so that when you put this back together, it's easier to set up. So we're gonna hook it on and we're gonna let out all the air. Next, we're gonna remove the rebound knob and then loosen both the bolts for the damper. Um, and the air spring. So if you have a Lyric, there's like a set screw that this releases. If you have a Yari, you just pull the damper, uh, or sorry, not the damper, you pull the rebound knob out. I had to use pliers on this one to get it loosened up, and it just pulls right out. Next, we're gonna break these loose. Loosen them a little bit. You don't wanna take these all the way out because you have to knock the fork free. And you're just trying to strike it just like that so it moved in flat. So now both of these are broken loose and we can loosen these off and pull the lowers and drain the oil. So we're gonna pull these out, set them aside. You're gonna want something down here to catch the oil when it drains out. So now you should be able to pull the lowers off the stanchions and let the oil drain. So once you free the lowers from the uppers, it's a good idea to just clean everything. If you're doing a full service, you can take out the wiper seals um, and then clean all, obviously clean inside the lowers. I'm going to go ahead and clean inside the lowers and I'm going to take my foam rings out and just give them a good cleaning and then soak them in my oil for putting them back in. Alright, now it's time to take out the damper. So grab your Allen key and take the screw out and take off the cap. You're going to want your fork facing up for this part because the motion control damper, it's full of oil in here. So when you take out the damper, if it's down, it's just gonna spill oil everywhere. So you wanna take this off first and then rotate it into your spill pan. If you have a socket that fits this, great. It's the best way to do it. Um, if you don't, you can use channel locks or whatever you have to break this free. The socket makes it nice, the channel locks work but you do want to be careful because you can kind of scratch up the top part of your uppers here. If I were going to reuse this part, I would definitely get the right socket for it. But since this is going out, I don't really care if I scratch up the damper itself. So once you get it broken loose enough, you can just unthread it with your hands and pull it out. So you can see like how different these dampers are. This is a motion control damper versus the Charger 2.1. So like they just, they're totally different. Now I'm gonna take my fork out of the stand and I'm gonna empty it out in there. And you can see it's way more oil and it's also a different oil. Um, so this one will make a mess if you don't catch it. If you don't catch the lowers, like it's not, it's like 10 cc's per side, so it's not a ton, but the, the damper's quite a bit. Once that's all emptied out, just go ahead and clean it out a little bit. It's a good idea to leave your drip pan below. That way the oil's still gonna drip out for a little while and this will catch all of it. So you're gonna need to remove this ring right here. They make a special tool that fits in there perfectly. I have a pair of needle nose pliers 
that I've kind of ground down the tips a little bit for doing stuff like this. And you're just gonna get in those two holes. So you let's see if I can get it. You're gonna get in there and pull it. Oh, almost had it. The specialty tool definitely makes this easier, but it is possible to do without it. All right, I got it out. Once that rings out, you can just pull out the bottom part of the damper. Just like that. Next, you want to clean inside here really well. And then it's time to put in the new damper. All right, once you've cleaned this out, you can go ahead and take your Charger 2.1 damper and install it from the top. Take your cassette tool. Are you going to tighten this? 28 nms. You can use a torque wrench or you can just kind of do it by hand. It's time to install your high speed and low speed compression. So it's these two separate pieces in a set screw. You want to make sure that the gasket is here in this piece on the high speed compression. Set screw in, tighten it down. Now that that's in, it's time to install the lowers. All right, so now we want to put our foam rings back inside. So go ahead and take the foam rings out of the oil bath. I like to shake off some of the excess. and then fit them back inside here. Once you get those rings in, I like to do one more just wipe down of the wiper seal itself because we need to grease it and we want the grease to stick on there. And now we're gonna take our dynamic seal grease and we're gonna put it around the wiper seals. All right, we've got our dynamic seal grease inside the wiper seals and now it's time to put the lowers back on the uppers. So I like to get these on one at a time, just like that. And then slide them down, pull it back a little bit because you need to put the oil in now. So check with the specifications for your fork, but this specific fork takes 10 milliliters per side. So I use a little syringe that has holds five milliliters. So I just do two of these in each side. Wipe off the outsides. And it's time to reinstall the nuts. So pull your fork all the way down. Make sure you get a new crush washer on the air spring side. And then make sure the washer's on the rebounds. There are torque settings for these. I do them by hand. If you're not comfortable doing it by hand, definitely get a torque wrench and follow the torque settings. The last thing to do is to get your rebound knob in there and screw in the set screw. Make sure that works and your fork's put back together. The last thing to do is just put the air back in your fork and put it on the bike. And you can now adjust your compression the way you want it, adjust your rebound, and your Yari or Lyric is now a Lyric Ultimate. It's a pretty straightforward process, it just takes a little bit of time, and then make sure you get the RockShox manual from online so you know um, it's a step-by-step -step guide on how to do this, and it tells you how much oil and everything to put in there. So, that's all there is to it, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.